Placenta, Wikipedia article audio. The placenta is an organ that connects the developing fetus to the uterine wall to allow nutrient uptake, thermoregulation, waste elimination, and gas exchange via the mother's blood supply, to fight against internal infection, and to produce hormones which support pregnancy. The placenta provides oxygen and nutrients to growing fetuses and removes waste products from the fetus's blood. The placenta attaches to the wall of the uterus, and the fetus's umbilical cord develops from the placenta. These organs connect the mother and the fetus. Placentas are a defining characteristic of placental mammals, but are also found in marsupials and some non-mammals with varying levels of development. The homology of such structures in various viviparous organisms is debatable, and in invertebrates such as Arthropoda, is analogous at best. Structure The word placenta comes from the Latin word for a type of cake, from Greek pi lambda alpha kappa epsilon nu tau alpha slash pi lambda alpha kappa omicron nu tau alpha placo and ta slash play counta. Accusative of pi lambda alpha kappa epsilon iota slash pi lambda alpha kappa omicron play coes slash play cos, flat, slab like, in reference to its round, flat appearance in humans. The classical plural is placenti, but the form placentas is common in modern English and probably has the wider currency at present. The placenta functions as a fetomaternal organ with two components, the fetal placenta, which develops from the same blastocyst that forms the fetus, and the maternal placenta, which develops from the maternal uterine tissue. It metabolizes a number of substances and can release metabolic products into maternal or fetal circulations. Gene and Protein Expression Placental mammals, such as humans, have a chorioallantoic placenta that forms from the chorion and allantois. In humans, the placenta averages 22 cm in length and 2.5 cm in thickness, with the center being the thickest, and the edges being the thinnest. It typically weighs approximately 500 grams. It has a dark reddish-blue or crimson color. It connects to the fetus by an umbilical cord of approximately 55-60 cm in length, which contains two umbilical arteries and one umbilical vein. The umbilical cord inserts into the chorionic plate. Vessels branch out over the surface of the placenta and further divide to form a network covered by a thin layer of cells. This results in the formation of villus tree structures. On the maternal side, these villus tree structures are grouped into lobules called cotyledons. In humans, the placenta usually has a disc shape, but size varies vastly between different mammalian species. Physiology about 20,000 protein-coding genes are expressed in human cells and 70% of these genes are expressed in the normal mature placenta. Some 350 of these genes are more specifically expressed in the placenta and less than 100 genes are highly placenta-specific. The corresponding specific proteins are mainly expressed in trophoblasts and have functions related to female pregnancy. Examples of proteins with elevated expression in placenta compared to other organs and tissues are PEG10 and the cancer testis antigen PAG4 expressed in cytotrophoblasts, CSH1 and KISS1 expressed in syncytiotrophoblasts, and PAPPA2 and PRG2 expressed in extravillous trophoblasts. Development the placenta begins to develop upon implantation of the blastocyst into the maternal endometrium. The outer layer of the blastocyst becomes the trophoblast, which forms the outer layer of the placenta. This outer layer is divided into two further layers, 
the underlying cytotrophoblast layer and the overlying syncytiotrophoblast layer. The syncytiotrophoblast is a multinucleated continuous cell layer that covers the surface of the placenta. It forms as a result of differentiation and fusion of the underlying cytotrophoblast cells, a process that continues throughout placental development. The syncytiotrophoblast, thereby contributes to the barrier function of the placenta. Placental Circulation the placenta grows throughout pregnancy. Development of the maternal blood supply to the placenta is complete by the end of the first trimester of pregnancy week 14. Maternal Placental Circulation In preparation for implantation of the blastocyst, the uterine endometrium undergoes decidualization. Spiral arteries in decidua are remodeled so that they become less convoluted and their diameter is increased. The increased diameter and straighter flow path both act to increase maternal blood flow to the placenta. There is relatively high pressure as the maternal blood fills intervillous space through these spiral arteries bathes the fetal villi in blood, allowing an exchange of gases to take place. In humans and other hemochorial placentals, the maternal blood comes into direct contact with the fetal chorion, though no fluid is exchanged. As the pressure decreases between pulses, the deoxygenated blood flows back through the endometrial veins. Maternal blood flow is approximately 600-700 ml min at term. Fetoplacental circulation birth microbiome functions deoxygenated fetal blood passes through umbilical arteries to the placenta at the junction of umbilical cord and placenta the umbilical arteries branch radially to form chorionic arteries chorionic arteries in turn branch into cotyledon arteries in the villi these vessels eventually branch to form an extensive arteriocapillary venous system, bringing the fetal blood extremely close to the maternal blood, but no intermingling of fetal and maternal blood occurs. Endothelin and prostanoids cause vasoconstriction in placental arteries, while nitric oxide causes vasodilation. On the other hand, there is no neural vascular regulation and catecholamines have only little effect. The fetoplacental circulation is vulnerable to persistent hypoxia or intermittent hypoxia and reoxygenation, which can lead to generation of excessive free radicals. This may contribute to preeclampsia and other pregnancy complications. It is proposed that melatonin plays a role as an antioxidant in the placenta. Placental expulsion begins as a physiological separation from the wall of the uterus. The period from just after the child is born until just after the placenta is expelled is called the third stage of labor. The placenta is usually expelled within 15-30 minutes of birth. Placental expulsion can be managed actively for example by giving oxytocin via intramuscular injection followed by cord traction to assist in delivering the placenta. Alternatively, it can be managed expectantly, allowing the placenta to be expelled without medical assistance. Blood loss and the risk of postpartum bleeding may be reduced in women offered active management of the third stage of labor. However there may be adverse effects and more research is necessary. The habit is to cut the cord immediately after birth, but it is theorized that there is no medical reason to do this, on the contrary, it is theorized that not cutting the cord helps the baby in its adaptation to extrauterine life, especially in preterm infants. The placenta was once thought to be sterile. Instead, a resident, non-pathogenic, and diverse population of microorganisms are present in healthy tissue. 
the uterus and its tissues are not sterile. The placenta intermediates the transfer of nutrients between mother and fetus. The perfusion of the intervillous spaces of the placenta with maternal blood allows the transfer of nutrients and oxygen from the mother to the fetus and the transfer of waste products and carbon dioxide back from the fetus to the maternal blood. Nutrient transfer to the fetus can occur via both active and passive transport. Placental nutrient metabolism was found to play a key role in limiting the transfer of some nutrients. Adverse pregnancy situations, such as those involving maternal diabetes or obesity, can increase or decrease levels of nutrient transporters in the placenta potentially resulting in overgrowth or restricted growth of the fetus. Waste products excreted from the fetus such as urea, uric acid, and creatinine are transferred to the maternal blood by diffusion across the placenta. It secretes neurokinin B containing phosphocholine molecules. This is the same mechanism used by parasitic nematodes to avoid detection by the immune system of their host. There is presence of small lymphocytic suppressor cells in the fetus that inhibit maternal cytotoxic T cells by inhibiting the response to interleukin 2. IgG antibodies can pass through the human placenta thereby providing protection to the fetus in utero. This transfer of antibodies begins as early as the 20th week of gestational age, and certainly by the 24th week. This passive immunity lingers for several months after birth, thus providing the newborn with a carbon copy of the mother's long-term humoral immunity to see the infant through the crucial first months of extrauterine life. IgM however, cannot cross the placenta, which is why some infections acquired during pregnancy can be hazardous for the fetus. Furthermore, the placenta functions as a selective maternal-fetal barrier against transmission of microbes. However, insufficiency in this function may still cause mother-to-child transmission of infectious diseases. The placenta and fetus may be regarded as a foreign allograft inside the mother, and thus must evade from attack by the mother's immune system. For this purpose, the placenta uses several mechanisms. However, the placental barrier is not the sole means to evade the immune system, as foreign fetal cells also persist in the maternal circulation, on the other side of the placental barrier. The placenta also provides a reservoir of blood for the fetus, delivering blood to it in case of hypotension and vice versa, comparable to a capacitor. Numerous pathologies can affect the placenta. Infections involving the placenta The placenta often plays an important role in various cultures, with many societies conducting rituals regarding its disposal. In the Western world, the placenta is most often incinerated. Some cultures bury the placenta for various reasons. The Maori of New Zealand traditionally bury the placenta from a newborn child to emphasize the relationship between humans and the earth. Likewise, the Navajo bury the placenta and umbilical cord at a specially chosen site, particularly if the baby dies during birth. In Cambodia and Costa Rica, burial of the placenta is believed to protect and ensure the health of the baby and the mother. If a mother dies in childbirth, the Aymara of Bolivia bury the placenta in a secret place so that the mother's spirit will not return to claim her baby's life. The placenta is believed by some communities to have power over the lives of the baby or its parents. The Kwakiutl of British Columbia bury girls' placentas to give the girl skill in digging clams, and expose boys' placentas to ravens to encourage future prophetic visions. In Turkey, the proper disposal of the placenta and umbilical cord is believed to promote devoutness in the child later in life. In Ukraine, Transylvania, and Japan, 
interaction with a disposed placenta is thought to influence the parent's future fertility. Several cultures believe the placenta to be or have been alive, often a relative of the baby. Nepalese think of the placenta as a friend of the baby, Malaysian orang asli regard it as the baby's older sibling. Native Hawaiians believe that the placenta is a part of the baby, and traditionally plant it with a tree that can then grow alongside the child. Various cultures in Indonesia, such as Javanese, believe that the placenta has a spirit and needs to be buried outside the family house. In some cultures, the placenta is eaten, a practice known as placentophagy. In some Eastern cultures, such as China, the dried placenta is thought to be a healthful restorative and is sometimes used in preparations of traditional Chinese medicine and various health products. The practice of human placentophagy has become a more recent trend in Western cultures and is not without controversy, its practice being considered cannibalism is debated. Some cultures have alternative uses for placenta that include the manufacturing of cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, and food. Nutrition Fetus of about 8 weeks, enclosed in the amnion. Magnified a little over 2 diameters. Picture of freshly delivered placenta and umbilical cord wrapped around Kelly clamps. Fresh human placenta Micrograph of a placental infection Micrograph of CMV placentitis A 3D power Doppler image of vasculature in 20-week placenta Placenta held Excretion Schematic view of the placenta Immunity Endocrine function Placenta accreta, when the placenta implants too deeply, all the way to the actual muscle of uterine wall, placenta previa, when the placement of the placenta is too close to or blocks the cervix, placental abruption slash abruptio placenti. Placentitis, such as the torch infections, chorioamnionitis. Cloaking from immune system of mother. Other Clinical Significance Maternal site of a whole human placenta, just after birth Society and culture Fetal site of same placenta Close-up of umbilical attachment to fetal site of freshly delivered placenta Zige, dried human placenta used in traditional Chinese medicine